I am Roman Kent. My children's favorite bedtime story, even when they became grown-ups, was the story of the dog we had when we lived in Poland. We called her Lala, which means dog. We had no idea what kind of a dog she was. We didn't care. We wanted her and we loved her. And that was all that mattered. But we were born Polish Jews. And the year was 1939. Germany invaded Poland September the 1st. We were thrown out of our apartment in Łódź the city where we lived. We hid in a textile factory my father had owned. But still, we kept Lala. At that time, she lived with puppies, beautiful golden puppies. But that life, too, did not last long. The German Nazis sent us to Wuchgat. We had to give up everything. We could not even bring Lala. We walked for hours to get to the ghetto. For us, the kids, we still didn't understand the implication exactly. We did not worry. We had parents. They worried for us. We were just worried about Lala because she was left in the factory with her puppies. Then, one night, we hear... Who do you think came in? The dog, Lala. How she found us, I shall never know. In the morning, she left us. She went back to see her puppies. But at night, Lala came back. So this was her routine. No barbed wire, no guns, nothing the Germans built stopped this little dog from loving us, from coming to us, and then returning to her puppies. I wish people would sometimes be more like Lala. This is a story my kids wanted me to repeat many times, but it has a moral. It taught me something too, that love is stronger than hate. But there is another part of this story which I did not want to tell my children about. One day, a notice appeared that all Jewish-owned dogs had to be handed over to the Germans. There was no way to deny that we owned Lala. The Germans had the names of everyone who owned dogs. Penalties for non-compliance were severe. Normally, Lala loved walks. All we had to do was call her name and shout, Lala, let's go for a walk. And she would bring her leash to us. That day, Lala instinctively knew something was wrong. She hid. No amount of prodding could cajole her into coming out. She refused to walk by herself. We had to carry her. Never saw Lala again. But even now, after everything, I still believe what Lala taught me. I still believe that love is stronger than hate. Today, the Nazis are long gone. Yet, at this very moment, as I speak to you, I can feel Lala's love. Lala lives on in my heart. She lives in the heart of my children, 
and grandchildren. And I hope she will live in the hearts of all who hear this story.